Hey guys, welcome back to the Encrypted Capital Recap for Thursday, January 7th. All right, Bitcoin hit $38,000 for the first time, pushing the cryptocurrency market value past $1 trillion. Crazy. Uh, Bitcoin smashed through $38,000 and hit a new record high on Thursday as the massive rally continues. Uh, it's up about 30% since the start of 2021. And the past 12 months, it's surged nearly 370%. Uh, the resurgence has been attributed to a number of factors, including more buying from large institutional investors, which is, uh, yeah, clearly, clearly the case here. Um, it's just been going like nonstop lately. So let's go ahead. Let's take a look at the chart here. Um, we can see Bitcoin right now, 39,274, and it's basically just gone straight up since mid-October. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the market cap here, the uh, crypto coin market cap. Um, so yeah, Bitcoin, 37% uh, in the last seven days, Ethereum, 69% in the last week, and XRP, talk about a rebound, all this uh, SEC news coming out, and it has still taken a nice bounce up 60, almost 60% for the week. So if you would have bought in at that dip when Grayscale bought in, which was New Year's Eve, uh, you would be up 60% on your money. So if XRP can bounce back like that with all the lawsuits going on, uh, imagine what it will do when everything is all cleared up. Uh, absolutely insane. So uh, they did get another lawsuit brought against them. Uh, Ripple's Series C lead investor Tetragon uh, sued the company in wake of the SEC charges. Um, so yeah, apparently the lead investor of Ripple's 200 million Series C uh, sued the company after a recent complaint, uh, which we all know. And then Tetragon is seeking to enforce its contractual right to require Ripple to redeem Series C preferred stock. So it looks like they had in there that um, there was a um, agreement where it says in Ripple Series C investment agreement, there's a provision that if XRP is deemed to be a security on a go forward basis, that Tetragon has the option of having Ripple redeem their Ripple equity. So since there has been no determination, this lawsuit has no merit. And we are disappointed that Tetragon is seeking to unfairly take advantage of the lack of regulatory clarity here in the U.S. The courts will provide the clarity and we are very confident in our position, says a spokesperson from Ripple. So, yeah, uh, in the wake of this lawsuit, it's going absolutely insane. So we're looking at since the dip here, if you would have got in 18 cents which like I said in the last video was a huge uh, area of support here. You're looking at, uh, yeah, about 106% gain. So, you know, I can't drill home the, um, the saying anymore, you know, buy when others are fearful and sell when others are greedy. Well, here's a perfect example. Um, you know, if you've done your research on XRP, uh, you know they're not going anywhere. You know the partnerships that they have. And, um, you know, I'm excited to see because I have actually bought that dip. So, um, so yeah, so XRP price rebounds 30% in 24 hours despite legal challenges. So uh, the, the price fell to 20 cents in late December after everything. And oh, it was less than 20 cents. But um, it goes on to say that uh, the price was at a high of 64 cents and then plummeted to 20 cents. But the first week of January 2021 has seen the fourth largest digital asset rebound 37% to a current price of 30 cents. I believe it's higher than 30 cents. Right now we're looking at 35 cents here. So uh, yeah, excellent news for XRP and Ripple. Uh, good to see that they had a nice bounce back there. Um, they did publish this uh, Ripple report called the Future of CBDCs or Central Bank Digital Currencies. Uh, so it basically just talks about here, it says the uh, introduction of Central Bank Digital Currencies will be one of the defining transformations in the history of money, how the underlying technologies implemented and monetary policies are set over the coming decade will determine whether sovereign bank digital assets open the door to enhance global trade and financial inclusion or maintain the siloed uh, inefficient and inequitable, inequitable status quo. Uh, this white paper provides central banks with a framework for implementing CBDCs and guidance for ensuring global interoperability the cornerstone of success for CBDC. So you guys can go and download this and take a look at it, but you know, this is clearly where the future of money is going. Um, central bank digital currencies are a thing, especially with the reports of uh, the US basically giving the green light 
forced uh, banks to use stable coins. Uh, I feel like, you know, this is just the direction everything is going in and, um, you know, it'll be uh, basically embedded whether people know it or not, they will be using central bank digital currencies somehow, some way. So uh, go on to the next article here. Flare sees 1000% price increase after Bitru launches FLR XRP trading pair. So um, Bitru Exchange recently announced its newest trading pair and the Flare token known as Spark is off to a hot start. Uh, initially jumped from 0.1 Flare per XRP up to one. So a thousand percent price increase. Um, it seems to have settled momentarily at 0.6 XRP. And so um, if you guys don't know what Flare is, it's the ticker for the native currency of the Flare network known as Spark. And back on December 12th, you would have been able to get one Flare for every one XRP you held if you held it on an exchange or if you held it on your ledger. And there was a protocol that you needed to go through in order to be part of the snapshot. But essentially any account holding XRP uh, would be getting this Flare token. And now it has started trading on Bitru. So um this goes on to say that uh xrp is the native currency uh of the xrp ledger created by ripple labs which we know and so uh with platforms like swift taking multiple days or more to complete an international transaction xrp could complete the same transaction in a fraction of the time so yeah and it's it's i use xrp if i'm ever moving money between exchanges or my ledger just because it's just insanely fast i mean you're talking about four to ten seconds maybe before the transaction shows up. So it's definitely the fastest, the most scalable. And I do feel like there will be a huge use for XRP once all of this stuff gets cleared up with the SEC. So um, hopefully we find that out sooner rather than later. But even if it is deemed a security, as mentioned before, it's not the worst thing in the world. So, um, but yeah, so Bitru is positioned to capture a huge slice thanks to its action for its ongoing support of Flare and XRP paired Flare tokens. So, um, on to the next article here. So these are some of the partners I just want to reiterate with uh, XRP. These guys working with American Express, MoneyGram, PNC, Santander, uh, SBI, and a host of other uh, banks and institutions. So, um, you know, I don't think that XRP is going anywhere anytime soon. They have the infrastructure built. They did raise their Series C, which is the last round before a company goes public. Uh, these guys clearly know what they're doing and they have a good team behind them. So I'll be uh, anxious to see all this stuff get cleared up here. So on to the next one. Um, so U.S. crypto firms invest in tax solutions as uh, IRS updates reporting forms. So Coinbase Ventures, PayPal Ventures, and Winklevoss Capital have all invested in cryptocurrency tax automation software provided by Taxbit. It says uh, U.S. regulators are continuing to fine-tune their tax reporting requirements for crypto users. A second draft of Form 1040 from the Internal Revenue Service for the 2020 tax season suggests that the agency will now require anyone who's engaged in any transaction involving cryptocurrency in 2020 will need to declare it. Quote, if in 2020 you engage in any transaction involving virtual currency, check the yes box next to the question on virtual currency on page one. Um, so... It says that the draft guidance clarifies the transactions encompass the receipt or transfer of virtual currency for free via airdrops, hard forks, uh, the exchanges of virtual currency for goods or services, the purchase or sale of virtual currency, an exchange of virtual currency for other property, including for another virtual currency and the acquisition or disposition of a fina financial interest in virtual currency. So basically simply holding a virtual currency in account or transferring it between two alternate accounts does not count, which is good. But yeah, they're coming after your crypto. Uh, they're coming to get all their tax money. So uh, you gotta make sure that you're claiming all that stuff. Otherwise, you know, the last thing you want is Uncle Sam knocking on your door. So yeah, it looks like everybody sees where this is going. Coinbase, PayPal, and Winklevoss. Um, you know, they're putting their money in the future, essentially. And yeah, unfortunately, you know, crypto is made in my opinion at least, to be able to transact anonymously, but clearly we are not going that route. So on to the next one. So uh, Telcoin, I talked about this a little bit in the last video and just want to go in a little bit deeper. So um, it says Telcoin going beyond remittance. So uh, earlier in uh, March of 2020, Telcoin entered into a partnership with ECPay, I'm sorry, ECPay, 
uh, the leading electronic payment service provider in the Philippines. And so it looks like they've been working a lot with, with uh, remittance providers in the Philippines, but basically EC Pay is the most convenient, reliable, and trusted one-stop shop for payment, top-up, and cash in services in the Philippines with more than 9,000 partner outlets nationwide, 24 hours, seven days a week. So um, couple EC Pay with Gcash here. So Gcash is uh, one of their other partners. And so they're owned by Globe Telecom Inc. And they're com commonly shortened as Globe. So they're a major provider of telecommunication services in the Philippines. Uh, the company is the largest mobile network operator in the Philippines and one of the largest fixed line and broadband networks. So Telcoin is teaming up with some of the biggest providers in the Philippines. And once they really get rolling here, I see nothing but good things for them. Uh, so on to the next article here. We're going into Elon Musk is now the richest person in the world, which, you know, who cares? Um, <laughs> he surpassed Bezos, it says. Um on the billionaire on the Bloomberg billionaire index um, ranking in the world's uh, 500 wealthiest people and I wanted to bring up a point here so yeah Elon's got a ton of money but let's go back over to uh, ripple real quick and there was an article that came out on Forbes and it was ripples trillion dollar man and this was on David Schwartz so uh, David Schwartz if you don't know is the CTO of Ripple Labs and Forbes did a whole article calling him the trillion dollar man essentially uh, it goes in to say that um, you know he's basically wanting to disrupt SWIFT the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication and he's been in the game for a long time so for those of you guys that don't know Schwartz had actually filed a patent which I have pulled up here uh, back in 1987 so this patent I'm sorry, 1988 it was filed in August. So it's basically a, um, a patent for a multi-level distributed computer system for distributed processing, preferably including a plurality of personal computers. A task input to the system is divided into a plurality of portions. As many of the portions as possible are distributed for processing on the lowest level of the system. So basically what he's describing all the way back in the 80s is distributed ledger technology which is exactly what Ripple and XRP run on. So I have a feeling that David Schwartz <laughs> will end up being the guy who surpasses all these guys, um, heads and tails above all of them. Uh, say goodbye to Bezos, say goodbye to Elon Musk. I think David Schwartz is gonna be in the running for uh, one of the world's wealthiest men. Uh, and you guys can go ahead over to Forbes and read that article. But yeah, just to reiterate guys, you know, Ripple, XRP, they're not going anywhere. Any coins, cryptocurrencies that are using remittances that have established partnerships similar to Telcoin, uh, these guys are going to change the world of finance and the way we transact money. So I think that'll do it here for the recap for Thursday, January 7th. If you guys like what you heard, please drop a like or a comment and we will catch you all in the next video.